All right, given all the talk of UFOs lately, uh, I'm going to be giving you a little example of the outer limits of design in Excel using this fun little example dashboard. I was just cruising through cool dashboard examples online, and sometimes I just like to find ones that look neat that you could totally replicate in Excel. A lot of this works just like PowerPoint. We're not going to be using any special custom features today. No custom coding, no plugins, nothing like that. It's just going to be regular old Excel. Uh, and let's just hop into it and I'll show you how we do this thing. So we're essentially going to be doing a series of like three steps. So we're going to be starting with a series of rounded rectangles that kind of block out the overall design. We're going to be styling those using a lot of gradients in this case, just to give them that color and pop. Then we're going to be adding in some imagery and icons, and finally I'll show you how we do some text and like finalize it with some cool visualizations in there. None of this is something that requires an advanced understanding of Excel, and these features, like I said before, work exactly the same as PowerPoint. So just to start out, you can select all of your background cells. You can just use Control-A to do that if you want. And we want to do like a nice dark kind of bluish background for this. It's a dark theme, so we want to have a kind of dark background. Uh, for anybody following along at home, this is a hex value of 2B344E. And on top of this, we're going to go to the Insert tab, and we're going to start dropping in shapes. Under Insert, there's a Shape option. The design that was the inspiration for this was just all rounded rectangles. So we're going to select the rounded rectangle option in here, click and drag to drop it in, and we're going to do this a few more times. Um, to save a little bit of time here, I'm just going to copy paste them. At this step, really all we're doing is thinking about hashing out our overall design, and so we're just kind of blocking out different sections, dropping things into place, figuring out what we're going to put in there. If you want to change the roundedness on a rounded rectangle, there's a little thing up in the upper left you can grab to adjust it. Um, I think about this almost like wireframing, and sometimes I start this step actually literally with pen and paper. Uh, it's a nice way to do it, just so I think about like, what do I need to include in this? What sections do I need? What kind of content am I going to put within each of those sections? That kind of stuff. Um, putting this thought in ahead of time is going to save you a little bit of work down the line, uh, and it really just helps you get pointed in the right direction from the start. What we're going to do next is we're going to start styling these. So. I'm going to go through kind of how I do this. We've got a couple of sort of just blue background sections here. These are solid colors. Um, we, we've done in the first example is we've just done a solid blue. The hex value here is 425085, but what we're really doing here is we're taking our background color and then we are just coming up with a slightly lighter version of our background color. So with the color slider, we could just slide it over. If you're on PC and you don't have that color slider, you could also uh, just go over to either the RGB sliders or one of the other sections, and you just want to kind of get a slightly lighter version of your background. Uh, we've done a similar thing here, also a lighter blue. Uh, this one has a faint gradient in it, but you can really just use a solid color on this one as well, and it'll work great. Uh, our leftmost section is a gradient, and our two sections here are gradients. And I'm just going to give you some tips for coming up with nice gradients in Excel that kind of have this cool look. So for this purple one, we've got a light purple to essentially like a slightly darker blue color. One of the keys, I think, to having nice, clean, good-looking gradients is to just make it a very subtle shift. You don't want to choose two colors that are really far apart, or something really, really dark and something really, really light. You want to choose something that's just a little bit of a change from one side to another. We're using a linear gradient here at a 45 degree angle. Typically, you're just going to be using linear gradients. Don't worry too much about the other gradient types. And if you're having a little trouble with this, don't worry. You might not get it right the first time. If you do your color and it's not working, just adjust them a little bit. Play with each color on each side of your gradient until you get something that you like. Um, for anybody who wants the actual hex values here, we're going from a 8D64DC, and then on the other side, we've got a 455288. Okay, now on top of this, what I've done is I've added a little subsection. We're just going to kind of highlight where we are later down the line. And what this is, is the exact same gradient as behind, but what we've done is, let me just open it, taken each color on each side. And we've just taken this little brightness wheel here, and we've just made it a little darker. So this is essentially the same gradient, except a little darker. <laughs> 
All right, now back over here, we've got another purple gradient. Again, very similar to this one, but in this case, it is just a very light purple to a slightly more saturated dark purple. Um, again, for anybody following along at home who wants the X values, 968 FCA to a 8465 CF. On the bottom, again, this is just a bluish green, a darker bluish green to a lighter bluish green. And the colors we're using here are a... 16435E, and that's to a 569BDE. And one other little thing I've done here is I just created a little highlight section here, and all this is is just a black rectangle, but with a transparency of like 80 to 90%, and that's just going to create a nice little highlight area. Okay, there's one last important thing. On all of these, there is a drop shadow. So if we select our shapes that we want to shadow on, I'm holding shift and multi-selecting. If we go to this little section of the format pane, we can add in a drop shadow. Now these ones are a uh, outer drop shadow going down to the bottom right. Um, and what I've done is I've just increased the transparency a little bit and increased the blur a little bit because I didn't want them to be really harsh shadows. I wanted them kind of soft. And that gives it this depth that you see, which we kind of saw in that source inspiration that we were looking at before. All right, next let's get some imagery in there. One of the cool defining things from that design were these cool shapes that were kind of transparent and part of the shape behind them, or part of each rectangle section. So to do this, what we've done is we have taken our shape, I've just copy pasted it, kind of hovered it right over the shape behind it, and then I've gone and found a picture of an alien. In this case, you need to find a picture that has two features. One, the picture needs to be transparent in the background. It has to be a PNG file, something that has transparency. Two, it needs to have roughly the same aspect ratio of the shape it's going to be sitting in. So what I mean by that is the length and the height need to have a similar ratio to this rectangle that you're going to put it into. I just used a little image editor to make this all fit right, but uh, if you can just find an image that's roughly the same type of rectangle, it's going to work okay. I'm going to copy this image, go back over, click into my shape I've overlaid on, my new shape, and then I'm going to hit Picture, Texture Fill, and hit Clipboard, and it's going to drop that image in there. You might have to just move this around a little bit, get it dialed in to get it in the right spot, but that's how it works. I've done the same thing over here with this UFO. And now we've got these cool sort of subtle faded out images in the background. Uh, you can, the, I have transparency at 80% on these, but you could make them more or less transparent depending on the design that you're doing as well. If you want them to show up a little bit more, you could just lower your transparency on that image. You might also notice these little icons over here. So if you don't know, if you have Microsoft 365 or 0365, under the Insert tab in Excel, you're going to find an Icons window. You can click that. It's going to give you a bunch of icon options. You can just select all the ones you want, hit Insert, and it'll drop them in. You might have to change the colors of them, and to do that, you just hold Shift, select all of them, and then you can change your fill color to, in this case, white, and adjust your transparency or anything else you want to adjust on them. One thing I like to always mention to people, if you have a lot of shapes like this, you can hold shift, click each of them, go to your graphics format or shapes format uh, menu, and on the align section you can go align left, and you could also, or in this case maybe align center makes more sense, and it's going to align them all. You can also then distribute them horizontally or vertically, and that's going to distribute them ease evenly so they're perfectly spaced. If you're having trouble with any of these, for example, maybe you have this shape here and it's showing up uh, in front of your icons, so your icons blocked out, you can always click things and bring them forward or send them back just like you would in PowerPoint. Because Excel has layers, this works exactly the same way, uh, and that's just a great way to make sure that stuff doesn't get blocked out by things on top of it. Okay, so the final step is just adding in text, like you see here. This process can sometimes take a little while, just like in PowerPoint, getting all your text looking the way you want it can take a little bit of time. So we go to the Insert tab and hit Text Box. 
So first thing that's going to happen when we drop these in, it's going to come out with this white box with an outline. We don't want that. So in the Format tab, we remove the line and we remove the fill. Uh, you can just type in whatever you want. Cool, alien dashboard, let's just say for now. And then highlight it and you can change all of your font settings here. So I'm going to make it white. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Uh, and then I'm going to maybe change the font here to like a Montserrat bold. Uh, maybe a little bigger. I don't know, something like that. Uh, and we've got a cool little bit of text here. Uh, and then we can just copy paste this and adjust it as we go. You know, down here, maybe we don't want it bold. Maybe we want it light. Uh, so we can change our font. Uh, maybe we want it a little smaller so it doesn't show up so much. And then when we like it, we can just copy paste it again a few times and then adjust it as necessary and put the text in there that we want. All right. I'm not going to bore you with going through each section for this, but Suffice to say, it's just the process of adding in text like I just showed you repeated. Uh, if you look over here, the only little nuance is that I like to do uh, some of my like text sections in a color that matches the background sometimes. So you notice we did a little purple here, a little blue here. And what this is, is just a, essentially, I've looked at the background color behind it. Uh, and the color picker tool is your best friend for doing this. There's a little color dropper here. Um, I've looked at the background color and then essentially I've just taken that color and chosen a version of it that's just a little brighter and lighter. Uh, and I did the same thing with this blue here. Same kind of background color, but a little brighter and lighter so you can still read it uh, and it still shows up in the background. And one other little note here. People see this, they're like, hey, this is a menu. How could you have a menu in Excel that what are you at? Is that even possible? You can actually take these and let's say we want to right click this. We could hyperlink to another page. And then when you clicked through to the other page, you could just have a copy of this dashboard, but move your little highlight area down to, you know, another piece of text. Um, and essentially then as you clicked between them with that linking, it would look like a menu selector moving. It's kind of a workaround if you want to have some kind of nav built into your dashboards. Uh, over here, just for anybody who's following along at home trying to kind of replicate this, I've got a 14 point font for my main name here. I've got a uh, 24 and then for this little descriptor area, we were, we're working with like an 11 point font, something really small. Uh, and then I've just added in a little line chart here. This is just from another dashboard with some fake data I grabbed. I just wanted to illustrate that you can integrate things like visualizations with real data into this. And that kind of opens up some possibilities to how you present your data. So with just a little bit of work, we can really do kind of all the same visual design things that we do in PowerPoint. The interface works the exact same way as PowerPoint. We're really working with the same feature set here. And I think it really opens up a ton of possibilities. Obviously in a corporate enterprise meeting, you're not gonna make a dashboard like this. But what it lets you do is understand that you have the ability to add in and use things like color, fonts, layout to communicate a little more effectively with your data to whatever degree you want to. I just like to show you the most extreme outer limits of what you can do here, but frankly, any amount of integrating design to communicate more effectively can be a really, really good thing and really help you stand out as you present your Excel reports or dashboards to anybody else in your organization. So anyway, I hope that helps everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back with more soon, more design tips, more style tips, all that. And if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, and if you want copies of the templates like this, I send them out on my newsletter totally for free. Uh, there's a link on my profile. You're welcome to join there. All right, bye for now.